Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dinners with Donna. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am Donna, and um, I like to cook, and I love Disney, and um, I welcome you every other Sunday into my kitchen where we cook and have fun and um, all kinds of good stuff. We're having some audio difficulties, so bear with us if you can through that. Uh, let us know how it sounds and how it looks, um, but yeah, we, <laughs> are we good? We go. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here, of course. I want to thank my channel members. You guys are amazing. You support me. Um, you know, you support my channel. And I just love you guys so much and appreciate all that you do for me. So thank you so much. And, of course, my moderators with the Blue Wrenches. You guys are amazing. And I couldn't do this without you. So thank you. And I think that's all the mousekeeping, right? Okay. So, guys, today we're doing multi-things. We are going to be making Disney treats, but we are also doing this for a very good cause. Um, one of my very dear friends, um, Emily, uh, LSU mom, as all of you may know her, um, the Hurricane Ida like slammed where she lives in Louisiana, um, as well as Northeast, as many of you know. Um, but her area was particularly hard hit. Um, so we are raising funds today for the um, Bayou Buff, uh, Emily, if I said that wrong, let me know, the Bayou Buff area and um, the volunteer fire department there has a Venmo set up so that you can send donations there. And instead of sending it like to the Red Cross and stuff where it takes like forever to get distributed, these funds will be put to use right away to the people who need the, the funds the most. So that's why I went that route. Um, also in the video description, uh, if you would rather, you can also send a personal PayPal to Emily, who set up a PayPal for this. Um, and what she's going to do with the funds that she that we raise is make uh, like care baskets uh, of supplies for all those who need them and um, distribute them as as needed. So that's where the funds are going today. I turned off super chats and monetization, so we are good to go on that. And we have Richie at the helm and Sam in the background. So we're going to do this. We are going to make lots of fun Disney treats. We're going to raise money and help out people that need us. And let's do it. What do you think, Richie? Sounds good. <laughs> so there's no keto today. So I think Richie will be happy. Um, we are going to start with um, marshmallow, uh, churro marshmallow wands. You would find these at the Marceline Confectionery at Disneyland, um, basically it's marshmallows on a stick, can't go wrong with that, covered in caramel, white chocolate, and a uh, mixture of graham cracker crumbs, cinnamon, and sugar. It's gonna be amazing. And also throughout um, our broadcast today, I'm going to show you uh, pictures of the area uh, so you can see how it was affected and, and the, how high the flood waters got. Um, in the Bayou Buff area, and um, it's really quite devastating what they've gone through. So our prayers and thoughts are with you, and, um, you know, just hang in there and know that we're trying to help as best as we can. So everyone just try to pitch in if you can. And if you can't, prayers are always welcome. So don't forget that. That's a big, huge thing. Prayers and thoughts are always welcome. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to go over the ingredients. So really easy. And I forgot to get the white chocolate out, but I'll do that now. See, this is why you go over your ingredients. I knew I missed something. I, you know, when you have that feeling, you're like, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? I forgot the white chocolate. All right. I got it now. Yay. Okay. This could not be more simple. So we have our um, marshmallows, and not the mini ones. You've got to use the nice, good size one. We have our jar of caramel that you uh, we're going to heat up and, and loosen up so we can coat the marshmallows. Uh, then we have our white chocolate chips. And then we have um, graham cracker crumbs, and then we're going to mix that with cinnamon and sugar. That's in the last step. Um, this is a little time consuming only because things need to be left to set in between the steps. 
but it's okay because in between our steps, we're going to be making other things. So we're, we're covered. Yes. Megan, you is now an apprenticeship. Oh, Megan, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. So, oh, we started by filling our Orlando guy mug, who I love. Um, he's helping us out and uh, unofficial sponsor today. Um, we filled this about, oh, halfway with water. And you're going to see why in a second. Because how we're going to start is by um, skewering our marshmallows onto these sticks. Now, in order to make it more uh, easy to do, we're going to dip the tip of the sticks, about one inch of it, into the water. That helps the marshmallows slide on easier. At least that's what the recipe says. Now, the recipe also, I should have told you. Sorry, guys. Yay, I know. He's number one. I love him. <laughs> he always has the best swag, doesn't he? He's awesome. Okay. So um, this recipe, actually, you can find it in the Delish Loves Disney cookbook that was just released. Um, so we're going to be making recipes from this. Um, you know, more often, but um, today we're doing the churro marshmallow ones, so they're in here. And then if you go to the page, see, this is what they look like. And then it gives you a little bit of history, too, uh, about Marceline's confectionery. Uh, people like to wax poetic about Joe Whip and sing the praises of popcorn buckets. And by people, we mean us but neither get the same fanfare as Disney's most popular treat, churro toffee. The Stuff of Lore debuted at Pixar Pier in 2018. And before long, actually, I have churro toffee in my freezer. <laughs> Isn't that bad? Sam brought it home when she went to Disneyland. Um, before long, the hype had vendors showing it all over the park and in downtown Disney. It's a rather humble treat, toffee covered with, with white chocolate, then dipped in a sprinkling of the churro's iconic cinnamon sugar mixture. And I think we're going to make churro toffee on an upcoming stream, so stay tuned. Uh, it's consistently Disney's candy production team's top-selling sweet bite every week. It's since been riffed on to create a churro shake, churro toffee cold brew, oh, that sounds good, and churro wands, which we will be making. A stack of skewered marshmallows that are dipped in caramel, smothered in white chocolate, and dusted with the little bits of churro toffee. It's cliche, but can you eat it? That last spin off is available at Marceline's Confectionery, which earned its name from the small Missouri town where Walt Disney grew up. While you're there, pick up a few goodies inspired by Walt's most magical characters. Now, see, had I had read that before I did this, which I didn't, I just read the side note, I could have crushed up my toffee and put it on the marshmallows because I have some in the freezer. But we're going to make it the way the recipe said to. So they use graham crackers, cinnamon, and sugar. So that's what we're going to do. Now, moving along, we're going to uh, get our lollipop sticks, which you can get. I got these at Walmart. They're just like $1.98 or something for like 25 of them. I don't think we're going to use 25. This makes eight wands, uh, which would uh, three marshmallows to a wand, so that'd be 24 marshmallows. I'm trying to see if there's an easy way to open this, but there's not. So now I need to get scissors. <laughs> I'm off to a great start, guys. Okay. I should always just keep scissors by me. I don't know why I don't. Okay. So we're going to count out eight sticks, two, four, six, eight. I'm going to put the rest aside. All right. So we're also going to open our marshmallows. Do you want a marshmallow? <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is skewer these and line them up on my cutting board. So we're going to dip them in the water. And they say, now my inclination was to spray it with Pam, and that would make it nonstick, but we'll see how this method goes. They said to dip it in the water. I just did in my Orlando guy mode. <laughs> so we're getting it nice and good and wet, and we'll see. Oh, yeah, it slides right on. So that method does work. One, two... 
and three. And there, see, we, we're just going to continue that process till all of our wands are coated with the marshmallows. And this is a fun um, thing you can do with the kids. I mean, skewering marshmallows. Who's, who's an expert at that? That's so easy peasy. Anybody can do that. And honestly, these marshmallows are sliding right on. I don't even know if it's the water or not. And right, what I'm going to do, because I'm curious now, I'm going to try sliding the marshmallows on without the water and see if that works. <laughs> yeah, that works too. It does not slide as easy, but it's still, it's a step you don't have to do if you don't want to, I would say. But um, yeah, I like it. It slides a little bit better with the water. So we're going to go with that. And that's a really nifty tip. I would not have thought to dip the um, lollipop sticks into the water. So you learn something new every day. And if you are in... Um, the Disneyland area and have access to the churro toffee, I would cover my marshmallows in that all crushed up finely um, like they do at Disneyland. What a treat that would be. The churro toffee is really coveted in our house. It's, it's a favorite. Everyone loves it. Okay, we're on our last wand. Okay, and three. And so now we have, yay, all our marshmallow wands. Okay, so now we're done with our marshmallows. So I'm going to put these away so we have more room on the counter. And um, we're going to take our uh, caramel. And I just have Hershey's. You can use whatever you can find. This was what I could find in my store. I don't know about how you guys are doing all over the country, but our shelves have been kind of sparse. And it's hit or miss what you'll find in the store when you're looking, like, for a specific ingredient, like caramel sauce. It's not like, you know, milk or eggs or something. It's, it's kind of a niche item. But um, this is the one they had, so that's what I went with. And we're going to put it in a medium saucepan. And I'm just going to check my recipe and see what temperature. I think it's medium. Just want to double check. And we're just going to loosen it up so we can dip the marshmallows in there. And it says to do it at... Medium low. Medium low heat. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to move over to the stove here. Ooh, that made a nice sound. And this is already kind of melted. So I think we're just going to have to warm this up. And it's not going to take long because it's kind of liquidy as it is. And then what we'll do is dip our marshmallow wands into them. And then we're going to put them on a parchment, parchment lined um, baking sheet so they can set up. And while they're setting up, we'll do some other things. Um, I'll get my parchment sheet. So here's the parchment lined sheet right here, medium low, and it's not going to take long at all. Um, so just hang in there, guys. Why don't we do a chat check, Richie? Chat check, Richie. You have many names, Dishwasher Richie, Chat check, Richie. I have LSU mom. Hi, Emily. Welcome in. I'm so glad you're here. Pepper Tree Villa. Hi, Arnie and Doug and Ben and Sherry. <laughs> Happy Hopper. Hi, Brenda. The great Marco. Mark. Oh, you guys, after my stream, go, if you haven't already, go watch Mark's video. He did a premiere today of his fireworks festival he went to last night. It's insanely good. You guys have to check that out after. It's amazing. So worth a watch for sure. UK Keith and Mandy. Hi, Keith and Mandy. Welcome in. Um, 
Happy Hopper. I said that. You did. Horizons 18. Hi, Horizons 18. Karen Forrester. Hello, Karen. It's Joey's World. Hi, Lisa, Joey, and Keith. Noelle Ash. Hi, Noelle. I hope you're doing well. Jay Grubbs. Hi, Jeff. Welcome in. Alyssa and Neil. Hi, Alyssa and Neil. Hope you're doing well. Jan S. Disney. Hello, Jan. Janie B. Hi, Janie. Todd B. Hi, Todd. We got all the bees. All the bees. <laughs> Jersey Mike. Hi, Mike. Um, Samantha Lowe. Oh, I know her. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Did I say DVC Sharon? Uh, no. Hi, Sharon. I'm trying to think in my head. I'm like, it like scrolls in my head when you're saying it. I'm like, James no. James Gerhart. Hello, James. Ashley loves Disney. Oh, hi, Ashley. Trisha Thayer. Hi, Trisha. Jennifer Piccolo. Jen. Hi, Jen. Anthony Piccolo. Tony. Hi, Tony. And B and JP. Well, hello. B says, hi, guys. Just wanted to let you know, JP has been waiting for a kidney, and we got one today. <gasps> He's in surgery right now. Please keep him in your prayers. Oh, that's amazing. Prayers and thoughts to you for sure. And I hope everything goes smoothly and the road to recovery is speedy and painless for sure. Hearts in the chat for JP. New member, um, Megan G. Oh, Megan, yes. Welcome to membership. I so appreciate that. Susan Neal. Nelson Robbies, Robles, Susan Robles, Nelson Robles. Thank you. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, we butchered your name. <laughs> okay, that's about it right now. Okay, cool. So we're all kind of welcome in, everyone. I'm just so glad that you're here with me um, while we make these Disney treats and uh, hopefully raise some funds for those in need in Louisiana. Um, I'm also later on going to show you some pictures and discuss. You know what happened in the area um, the storm surge really hit hard there uh, the houses took on lots of water some of them are total losses and it's um it's hard because so many are displaced right now um so any help any of you can give would be much appreciated mickey travels is here now oh hi mickey travels welcome in scarlet pemford hi scarlet Surfer. we're making later after we make these we're going to be making the mickey beignets with the mix that Scarlett gifted me, so, yep. Surfer girl. Hi, Cherie. Cody Arbo. Hello, Cody. Okay, I'm just gonna see. WDW Max. Oh, hi, Max. I hope you're doing well. Margie Lenny. Hi, Margie. JL. JL, hi, JL. Okay, this is looking pretty good right now. So I'm just going to, if you want to move to stove cam or whatever, I'm going to line them up here, but and get these in and dip them in the caramel. That's the first step. And it's hard to get it on that bottom marshmallow, so just going to help it along a little bit. And we're just twisting and turning and gently coating the marshmallows. That looks good. What do Cla you guys think? Those Classy are Disney good. Mom's here. Oh, hi. Welcome in, Classy Disney Mom. And Michelle the Quilter. Hi, Michelle. Okay, so you want the excess, you know, you don't want a whole big thing of caramel on you. So you kind of spin it around and get some of the excess off. And now we're just going to put them on our parchment paper to set. Well, hello, Disney Princess in training. Welcome in. And Veronica Greenbaum. Well, hello, Veronica. Thank you for being here. And Ashley loves Disney's here. Well, hello. And I don't know, how's the audio, guys? Because I'm hearing an echo. It's a little distracting for me because I don't like to hear my voice. But <laughs> You'll have to let me know. It is all the sugar. Yep. But we will counterbalance it after. We did. 
<laughs> Absolutely not. We could not forget Jersey Mike and Happy Hopper. Well, hello, Earspirational. Welcome in. Okay. Now, I'm wondering if I should have maybe gotten a bag of caramels and melted them down. Because this seems a little thin to me, but once it sets, maybe we don't need a big, you know, layer of caramel. It just seems thin to me, but... This is what I could find at the store. It's said to get hot caramel, and I couldn't find anything uh, like that that was like uh, so kind of solidified in the jar that you melt down. So this is what I could find. So we're going to go with it and hope it works. This is actually really fun, and it's not hot at all, so you could definitely let, um, you know, I would say kids maybe six or six and over help with this, but it's definitely fun. I've got two more, and then it says to let it set for approximately 30 minutes, so we will do that. Lauren, it says, if you melt the caramel, um, you could, and I actually thought of that, but I didn't really have a pan that was conducive to that because it was too um, thick. So the caramel would have been in a really, really thin layer. But this is working out just, just fine. It's just because the caramel that I have from the store is a little bit loose. Okay, so this is what they look like at this stage. We're going to put them aside and then um, move on to beignets. And what I'm going to do is pour the rest of this caramel, because I'm going to need this pan to melt the white chocolate. I'm going to pour the rest of the caramel back in the jar. so we can use it for something else. Rachel Hamilton says, I bet individually wrapped square caramel will be more available now with fall. Yeah, yeah. Now see, I used what the recipe was trying to tell me to use, which was a jar. It said to use a jar of um, hot caramel topping. And that's what I went for. But in retrospect, Rachel, I think you're right because they would have had a little bit more um, uh, consistency to them and not been so thin and runny. So you're absolutely right. But you guys know I always try the recipe the way it's written first, and then I go back and tweak it. Okay, I need to get this caramel out of here because we're going to melt white chocolate in it next. There we go. And that should be an easier um, process because I've done, whoops, done that a lot of times. So, Okay, and as you can see, we hardly used a lot of caramel. So I definitely think... It needed to be thicker, but we got a layer of caramel on there, and that's what we wanted. So, you know, we're going for it. Okay. So next, we are going to make our beignets, and I'm going to put the oil on the stove to heat up. We want to get the oil, I think, to 350 or 375. Let me just double check. 370. Yep. And this uh, mix was gifted to me, like I said, by uh, our good friend Scarlett Penford. Thank you so much for thinking of me. I'm finally getting to use it. I promised I would. It just took me bloody forever to <laughs> get going on it. Okay. So we're done with the Orlando guy for now, but we still love him. And we're done with our graham cracker crumbs. So put those aside. And this could not be 
more simple. This is authentic uh, Cafe du Monde mix, just like from New Orleans, which is appropriate because we're doing hurricane relief today for uh, Louisiana. So yeah, and um, they sell this at their stores, but they also, uh, this is how they make Mickey beignets at Disney. They use this exact mix. So really good stuff. And all you do is take the mix and water. That's it. It's so simple. Okay. So uh, it says on the back, just a little history, the original French market coffee stand serving cafe au lait and hot beignets, French donuts, 24 hours a day, year round. This familiar New Orleans landmark has been located in the French market since 1862, guys. So they know their stuff. Okay, so here's the mix. And it's uh, in a bowl. You add two cups of the mix and seven ounces of water. Okay, I'm going to loosen up the mix. <laughs> Okay, two cups of the mix. I'm gonna put it in here so I don't spill. Okay, one and oops, see I got a little extra, but that's okay. All you need to do if that happens is add a little more water but I think we'll be good. It says to add seven ounces of water. Um, I'm gonna see where this gets us. So this makes, look how much mix we have left. This is gonna make a bunch of beignets. Hashtag bunch of beignets. <laughs> so you get more than one batch out of a box. That's good to know. Okay, so now it says to add seven ounces of water and stir with a spoon until blended. And then we're gonna roll it to an eighth of an inch inch thickness on a floured surface uh, using flour to liberally cover the dough and then we're going to instead of cutting it into squares we are going to use our handy dandy mickey beignet cutter and we're going to make ourselves some mickey beignets so yay okay i'm going to get my water from the fridge Okay. And, Jennifer yeah. Pickle has said, I'm suffering from short term memory. Did she place the marshmallows in the fridge? No, you don't put them in the fridge. They said just leave them on the parchment um, for 30 minutes to set. So we're going to see where we're at. And as you know, we're in this together. So we'll see if that works. <laughs> Bobby wants to know if Beignet would be a legal travel word. Yes, yes, it would, as long as you spell it correctly. Okay, so I've got my handy dandy um, spatula here. I'm going to rinse out my um, my cup here, my measuring cup, because I might need it again. There we go. I just always like to clean as I go along. Just a thing I have. Okay, so we're just going to mix this up. And now if your gel is too sticky, I would uh, suggest adding a little bit more of the mix, maybe like a tablespoon at a time till you get it to where you want it. But I think we're good. This gel is looking mighty fine. Okay. Yep, that didn't take long to form at all. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my board prepped. Whoops. I'm gonna get some flour on here. I'm gonna get my rolling pin, and then we're gonna roll out roll those out some beignets. Sound like a plan, Richie? Okay. My hands are sticky from the caramel spill. Get that off of me. I don't want sticky hands. Okay. I also am going to need um, a plate to put the beignets on when they're done. Now, let's see. Also, what I did, 
um, was I got some powdered sugar in a lock and lock. Um, and what I'm going to do is um, put the beignets on a paper plate real fast uh, to get excess oil. I'm going to line it with paper uh, towels. Then I'm going to put them in the, um, which camera are we on? This one? Oh, I thought we were stove cam. Sorry. Um, we're going to put it in this uh, handy dandy uh, lock and lock container of uh, powdered sugar when they're done after I drain the excess oil off. And then um, we'll cover them and they'll be ready to eat. Okay. So we need to line our paper plates with some paper towels to absorb the excess grease. Now I need flour. I need my ruling pin. I've got my cutter. That's the thing. When you make a lot of things in a show, when I prep my ingredients, it takes all my counter space. <laughs> I run out of counter space, but that's okay. Okay. So I'm just going to use a spoon and just kind of. Okay. I'm going to keep the flour at the ready just in case. We need it again. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to use the spatula so I don't get all messy and just kind of put it all over the board because we're going to roll it out. Amy B said, are you making some pumpkin spice right now? I am not, but I bet you could turn these into pumpkin spice by adding pumpkin pie spice to them or some cinnamon and nutmeg or something. Ginger, that'd be nice. Okay, I'm going to do this and maybe you can take care of that, Richie. Okay, so now as you can see, we have our dough. It is a little sticky and it's supposed to be, so don't worry about that. I'm going to mix in this flour. And don't be afraid of your dough. This is the fun part. You're just kind of kneading it. You fold it over, you press down, get more flour incorporated into it. And this says, <laughs> yeah, we're just kind of getting it to a consistency of where it's not gonna stick all over my hands. So we're getting there. And I don't know how many of you maybe have been um, affected by the storms, but um, our hearts definitely go out to all who um, were affected. So many people had flooding. Uh, I know people in the Northeast whose basements flooded, um, who were without power, still without power. Um, just be safe. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get this into a disc. There, that's more of a disc. Let me, there, there we go. I didn't like that. <laughs> I'm going to roll it a little bit better. Okay, that looks more, a little more round. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. I'm going to say, it says to about a two inch thickness. I don't want to go too thin. We're going to use our Mickey cutter. Rachel said, I think at Disneyland the flour, oh, they flavor the powdered sugar instead of the dough. I remember having peppermint powdered sugar with wine for Christmas. Oh, how fun. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I mean, you could do anything with it. You could flavor the sugar with cocoa or peppermint or lemon, whatever season or flavor you like. See, we got our Mickey. He's so cute. Okay. 
And now, you know, with your remaining dough, we'll just do the same thing. Okay. It's a little sticky, so we're going in and trying to get all out of it. So it'll be round. I think we're going to get like maybe four more beignets out of this, maybe. I'm trying to get them to the same um, thickness so that they cook evenly. And you just keep going until you run out of dough or you don't have enough dough to make one. So it's all good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save just a little pinch of dough. That's how I test my oil to make sure it's um, hot enough. Okay. Now, Emily, if you're still in the chat, um, feel free to let others, um, you know, know about Bayou Buck and um, what happened there because um, they, they are like underwater without electricity, without supplies. It's, it's rough. I can't imagine being without like, you know, internet and, and all that stuff that would, that would like, I think Sam would be like devastated. I don't think Richie could survive either. Yeah. He's always on his devices. I mean, I think I could fare a little bit better than them because I lived in Alaska and we didn't really have anything there and our internet was really cruddy. <laughs> okay. So we yielded from that one batch. This is what's left a little bit. I don't think it's enough to make a whole um, beignet. So maybe I'll just make a funny shaped one, but we've got uh, three, eight. We have eight beignets. So I'm gonna um, test the oil real fast. Mm. I'm gonna also test it with a the thermometer because I'm not digging exactly what I'm saying right now. I'm washing my hands. How's chat doing, Richard? Good. Okay. So now that I have my hands about me again, I'm going to take my thermometer and uh, test where we're at. Yeah, see, I knew we weren't quite there when I put that little bit of dough in. We're at 285. We're getting there. Oh. Nope, 294. We still need to be at 370. So we're going to let that go a little bit. But um, Richard, do you want to show some um, pictures? Emily shared um, some pictures of what's going on um, in uh, Bayou Buff and the surrounding area of Louisiana. Um, it's it's quite, uh, quite a sight. Do you want to do it because my hands are kind of doughy? I don't want to wreck your iPad. <laughs> Doughy. <laughs> so you can see there's like roads and bridges are washed out. And look at that. Roofs are totally blown off of homes and they're look at the look at the water. I mean, the water obviously was not there before, um, and and now it, these homes are underwater. It's it's crazy. Yeah, the garage. Look at that. That shed. The um, roof is all torn apart, and the cars in there are all in water. I I don't even know how you can get out of there. That you went the wrong way. <laughs> And look at this. I mean, oh my goodness, that's, there's so much water. I mean, it's crazy. Look at this house back here. The water level is so high. It's scary. Mm -hmm. And this car's up to its almost headlights 
in water and you can see where the shingles and the, uh, you know, where the roof is damaged. And this has water almost all the way up to their front porch. I mean, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm going to go the other way. Yeah. That's it. But um, I know there's more. Um, unfortunately, Emily, I have to use all my devices to stream with. And those were the ones I sent to Richard. But there's others, too, um, where the water is literally like almost a foot high in inside people's homes. Um, you know, you can't recover from that. It's not something like, oh, let it dry out and, you know, everything will be fine. That's not how it works. And, um, you know, these people have to rebuild their homes. Uh, they've lost their homes. They've, they've, their lives are all uprooted and um, it's just horrifying. Um, so any little bit we can do uh, would be amazing. So, and I will be making a donation to Emily. I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> so yeah, I will be uh, Ben mowing. Uh, the fire department, and hopefully it, it, it helps in, in some way, even if it's a small way, if it's some way. But how's chat doing? Yeah. And thank you, Emily, um, for allowing me to share that. I know, um, you know, it, it's hard when, when things, especially close to home, um, you know, things like that happen. It's, it's hard to share. Um, so my heart really goes out to you. And uh, you know this, Emily, but I, I love you very much. She's Emily is one of my best friends in the whole world. So I would do anything for Emily. And she's done so much for this community. Um, just the hours she puts in modding are unbelievable. I mean, she's incredible. And anything we can do, you know, just to thank her and, and help out her area uh, from this devastation, I think we should all pitch in as a community and do our part because um, she's just an amazing lady and she doesn't like to, um, you know, tune her own horn or complain or anything like that. Emily is the last person to ask for help. And it, this was my idea. I went to Emily and asked. She did not ask me uh, for help. So just so you guys know, because um, Emily is awesome like that. <laughs> Anthony the Mower Man says, hi, Donna. Hi, Anthony. I saw your interview with AGT on Instagram the other day. Awesome. Thanks for doing such a positive thing. Oh, thanks, Anthony. You're awesome. We love Anthony, too. He's so nice. Okay, we're getting there, guys. We are at 3... 50... 60... We're eight degrees away. Not from Kevin Bacon, but from oil temperature. <laughs> oh my goodness. So um, yeah, Cafe Du Monde is like an institution with beignets. And we always get ours um, when it's open at um, the Port Orleans Resort at uh, Riverside. And then we would always get beignets and then go to see Yeehaw Bob. Of course, neither of which is there right now. But, <laughs> but that was a tradition for us. And they're so delicious. And I love them. And they even, when they reopen, hopefully they, they will still have it. They have a beignet burger. And it's not what you would think. The bun is a beignet, but it's not coated in the powdered sugar and all that. It's really delicious. It's almost like a brioche bread. Really good. I highly recommend it for a burger fan. Ben from PCB says, Donna, I'm hobbling around today trying to do some laundry. Oh, laundry's no fun. <laughs> well, I hope you're feeling better. Okay, we are at temperature now. Yay. Okay, so now we are going to put our beignets in gently. Don't hurt yourself. I'm going to do four at a time so I don't overcrowd the pan. And in between, I'm going to wash because the dough does make your hands really um, sticky and floury and all that good stuff. So. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to get my um, strainer, which is called um, a spider. For those of you who don't know, it's a Japanese tool. But um, I don't know. Are we on stove cam? I'm not even paying attention. And they're puffing up very nicely. Yep. Wait till it's golden brown. Now, <laughs> the little scrap I put in is golden brown. That's about the color you're looking for. Maybe that's a tad darker than I'd like, but that's a little scrap. So we'll just ditch that. Mm, good. I actually ate it, guys. <laughs> that was good. Okay. We're getting there. Okay, that one looks good. That looks good. Yep. And these seem very reminiscent of the Doughboys that I made on my um, Rhode Island show back in the day when I first started streaming. Um, except, you know, the mix is already made for you. So really cool. And like I said, I'm just going to pop them on a paper towel lined paper plate. You can use a regular plate. I just try to do less dishes. <laughs> we'll get the um, excess oil off, put them right into our um, powdered sugar, shake them up, give them a shimmy shake. And then we will do the other four and we'll have made ourselves some Mickey beignets courtesy of Scarlett Penford. So thank you again, Scarlett, for this wonderful treat because we have not had Mickey beignets since Port Orleans closed and look at that color guys just a nice light golden brown um, I don't want them to get too terribly dark but that's what you're looking for right there so I'm going to drain these I'm going to put the other ones in then we'll put them in the powdered sugar and then Richie, you know what comes next? Get to try them. Oops. I may or may have gotten a uh, may not have gotten a little bit of flour on the floor. And then this this scrap, I'm not going to waste it. I'm just going to form it into an oddball, maybe a square or something. Try to make it like a Cafe Du Monde square, and we'll put that one in there. Okay, now I'm going to put them in the powdered sugar. And Richie, I'm going to have you do my board for me. So that I can use it again. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to put these right in here. Give them a shimmy shape. Oh, oh, did you guys see that? <laughs> well, now we're really at Cafe Dumont because locks didn't go on my lock and lock and the powdered sugar flew. That's okay. I've got this. Okay, we're good, we're good. Richard's laughing at me, just so you guys know, because I usually don't do things like that. But I will clean up the mess. I'm gonna have to clean my watch. <laughs> okay. I got it on a pot. Oh man. Okay, I got some powdered sugar on my mat. Not much. It cleans up real easy. So tip guys. If you are making this, make sure your lock and lock is locked. Right, Richie? 
I'm fine with that. Yeah, no, I'm not. Thank you. Okay. That one looks good. Okay. That's the funny looking one. We'll call that one Donna. <laughs> and then again, see, we got, oh, where'd we go? Are we not at the stove anymore? We got good color on them, but we're not at the, oh, there we go. Here we go. <laughs> Do you have access to your phone? Because we're going to take pictures. Okay, so now these are done, guys. I just got to shake the other ones up. Get a pretty plate. I think we'll do a Disney plate. How's that? Let's do a fun Disney plate today. I think I got sugar on my shoe. Or they're wet, one or the other. Look at that, guys. Aren't they cute? Okay, I'm gonna put um the arrow. Maybe we can enable them a little bit. Okay. And I'll put these in. And this is why also I did not wear my black or my blue uh, chef's coat today because I knew with the flour and powdered sugar flying around this joint, I'd make a mess. It's a good thing you don't have me helping with cleanup, Emily. Look what I do. I make such a mess. Okay. These are done. Sam, are you going to try one? Yep. Was that a yes or a yay or an A? Okay. You want to go for it? Oh, listen to the music. That goes great for the beignets. They're hot, so be careful. Mmm. Very good. <laughs> I'm not the only one, you guys. Mmm. <laughs> These are super yummy. I forgot to put the cranberries. Mm. Rashy, but so good. Now, have you seen these in Louisiana? They serve them with so much powdered sugar. When you take a bite, you end up covered in it. You're not doing it right if you're not covered in it. But oh, yeah. you are, so you did a good job, Richie. Mm. Really good. What do you rate it? A ten. We put it on a towel. Jennifer said, "If you wear the powdered sugar, it's a sign that they're delicious." Mhm. Mm so true. Oh, I think I got my mic off too. Okay. Sorry, guys, if you hear tapping. I got powdered sugar on my bed. I can't live today. Okay, I'm going to get one for Sam. And hopefully my shoes will stop squeaking eventually. Okay. My shoes are squeaking because when I cleaned the mat, it was still wet. Okay. Do you want one or two, Sam? Okay. Emily said she likes her beignets dipped in maple syrup instead of covered powder sugar. Oh. oh, and I bet honey would be good too, Emily. Yum. That sounds good to me. Okay. We've officially made a mess of the kitchen. That's okay. We've got this. Just nothing a uh, Forex wife won't 
Oh. And I apologize again for my squeaky shoes as they dry off. They shouldn't do that again, <laughs> hopefully. All right. There's four more beignets in the um, in the sugar. Pete you McDevitt is here. Hmm? Pete McDevitt is here. Pete! Hi, Pete! Welcome Craig, in. Craig's Robotics. Craig, hello, hello. Okay. And guys, if you want, uh, if you are so inclined to donate to the Bayou Buff uh, Volunteer Fire Department, um, the link is pinned to the top of the chat. Also, uh, Emily's PayPal link and the Venmo link are in the description of the video. I couldn't fit them both into the pinned message because it limits how many characters I have, unfortunately. And you can only, I believe, pin one message at a time. At least that's what it was telling me. So that's why I didn't put every all the links in. Okay. We're good. And I'm sticky. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Lisa's putting the links in too. Oh, great. Thank you so much. My mods are the best mods anywhere. I'm very lucky. And yes, I'm cleaning the bottom of my shoe because it's driving me nuts. I'm not sure what's going on with it. Hopefully, they'll stop squeaking. Okay. Now, I'm going to check on the marshmallow wands and see how set they are. They're still sticky, so we're going to wait. Okay. Since we're already making a mess and frying, I say we do uh, corn dog nuggets from Casey's. How's that sound? Yep. Sounds good to me. All right, perfect. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that is so not good. <laughs> Sam's laughing at me too now. Yay. Okay. Corn dog nuggets from Casey's are like Sam, one of Sam's favorite things. Um, they couldn't be more simple to make at home. Um, the recipe I have says to put toothpicks in each one. I think that's a little bit weird. Um, so I'm going to try doing it without that. I'm going to put it in the batter, try to knock the excess batter off, and then put them immediately into the oil. So that's what I'm going to do. All you need is a box of your Jiffy corn mix, corn muffin mix, and we're going to make it according to the package, and we're going to add a little bit of sugar. And also, you can jazz it up if you want to add uh, spice in here. You can add a little hot sauce in here, um, but Sam likes them that way, so I'm going to make them that way. Why, why am I sticking to everything? <laughs> and stop laughing at me, Richard. Uh, Okay, so we need an egg, and I'm going to use egg beaters, because that's what I always use. And then we're going to need some milk, and we're going to need some sugar. Sugar everywhere. Mm-hmm. Now, what did I do with that? I'm not sure what that's for. Okay. Okay, so one egg, as you know, is equivalent to a quarter cup of the liquid. And I, I think I need to wash that with like like water because it's, it's so sticky. It's annoying me. Okay, so I shook this so it you know mixed up a little bit. And then we've got our egg right there. Okay, so that's equivalent to one egg right there. And then we're going to use, I think it's two-thirds of a cup of milk. One-third. One-third of a cup of milk. Good thing I didn't do two-thirds. That would have wrecked everything. Made it really liquidy. Okay. Hey, Nikki. Welcome in. Uh, thanks for coming in, Nikki. We miss you. Okay. What? He missed beignets. He did. You missed beignets, and they were really good, too. 
Okay. But now I'm sticking to the floor. <laughs> and Richard's laughing at me. But he has sugar on his shirt, so he can't be laughing at me. <laughs> okay. I need a spoon. That's a fork. I had a spoon out. Did you see where it went? <laughs> well, I'll just go with this then. This tablespoon. That's what I was going to add anyway. A tablespoon of sugar. One and two. Give it a little sweetness. And now we're just going to go in and stir. Hi, Mary. Welcome in. Dee, welcome in. It's so good to have you in the chat. I haven't heard from you in forever. Miss you. Oh, Amy. Hi. Welcome in. And then you just want to kind of try to break up lumps. It's going to be a little lumpy, and that's okay. And I'm just going to double check the recipe because if I'm reading, if I read it correctly, it said to just make the box mix the way you make it, and then we coat the little uh, mini hot dogs, which I got little smokies, and um, we're going to like we're doing a breading. We're going to dredge them in flour, then in the corn mix, uh, corn muffin mix. And then into the deep fryer. God, I hate that noise. <laughs> and Richard's still laughing at me. Okay, my recipe is over here. Roxanne Simpson said, sent a donation. Thank you for doing this. Oh, thank you, Roxanne. That is so much appreciated. You have no idea. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now we're going to reheat our oil. It's probably still at temperature. I'm just gonna check it. I gotta close it and open it again. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this oil's almost up to temperature. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna take, um, this is just flour. I'm gonna put my mini hot dogs in here. And then we're going to put them in the mix and we're going to then uh, deep fry them. Okay. Hi, Keith. Welcome in. Okay. This does not seem to want to come up right here. Okay, and this is why I have my scissors over here so that I can get them in. Okay. Danny B said, mini hot dogs, like mini mouse, not mini. That's right. <laughs> and I'm making 24. I don't know that we'll eat eight a piece for dinner later, but I am um, have leftovers for lunch. I probably should put the milk away. And I'm gonna need a um gonna need a lock and lock for that one. Okay. I don't know if it's my shoes that are sticky or if it's the mat. Maybe you can tell me later. Ha ha ha. 
Okay, they're mock this time. Oh, probably the original animated. I've seen the live action. It was good, but it was not, you know, I, I love Robin Williams and you can't beat him as a genie. So. Okay, so you can see our little, where are we going? Here, 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 here. <laughs> We're going everywhere. Whee! Um, <laughs> Um, they're all coated with the flour. So now they're ready to go into the corn uh, mixture. And this is going to get a little messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw them in here and then I'm going to get some gloves and do it that way. Hi, Kevin. Welcome in. And then Richard, while I'm doing this, if you wouldn't mind helping me by... Um, Getting a lock and lock for that, uh, the leftover sausages. That would be awesome. And then I'm going to get my gloves on and then coat these and get, gosh, I can't stand sticking to that mat. It's driving me nuts. And then we're going to, I'm going to lower that heat just a touch. So it doesn't get too much. Okay. Yay. We're getting gloves on. It's kind of gonna make a big mess. <laughs> but it's okay. And the nice thing about all of these is we don't have to use the oven. So like the heat index here is well over 100 degrees. And um, I think my mic fell off, Richard, but my hands can't deal with it. I'm sorry. Hi, Pam. Welcome in. I hope you and Jim are doing well. We are making um, corn dog nuggets. My glove is not all the way on my finger, and I don't know why. Angel says, Donna, I never tried corn dogs. We don't have them here. Really? Oh, my goodness. They're yummy. Definitely junk food, but, but they're very good. Glenn Merchant says, Hi, Glenn. Just got a line as I make the master chef crab right here. Ooh, that sounds amazing. And these are not going to take long at all. Now, let's see. Oh, Richie, I need help. I'm going to need a, oops, hello, uh, plate or something. I forgot to get a plate. For now, I'm just going to dump them in here. They're so simple, though. Look, guys. Probably should have put a paper towel on it, but oh well, it'll be all right. Okay. They look really yummy. We could probably get a lot more um, nug uh, corn dog nuggets out of the batter, but I don't want to have a whole lot of extra. Because, you know, they're not exactly the healthiest thing in the world. <laughs> he 
Yes, it, it, they're, they quick very quickly. And I think one of them, because I put some in with some that were already cooking, one of them, I think the batter may have come off, but that's okay. How are we looking here? Oh, they're getting there. Pamela said, Jim's cooking baked haddock in the oven, Ooh. sweet and regular mixed potatoes and Greek salad. Are you kidding? That sounds amazing, Pam. Let's go to Pam's house. <laughs> okay, I'll get this last one out. And then I've got one more batch to do. Let's see where to go. But you can see the color on these are just lovely. And the coating, just like you'd get at Casey. Okay. Catherine said, I think I can make them, Donna. I don't cook. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you. You can do it. Yeah, I think this method, if you have your food safe gloves, is better. I mean, I don't could not imagine sticking toothpicks in every single one of these. And then you waste your toothpicks as well. Okay. Oh, thank you, Pam. That's very kind of you. Okay, this one's the last one, I believe. And this is making a mess, but like I said, you know, it's all good. We've got this. And that's why you wear your gloves, see? Because this is what my hand looks like now. So highly recommend. They're like 10 bucks for a box of like 500 of them. And I use them for all the time, so. I highly recommend them. Um, you want to do me a favor? I would have left them in the plastic and put them in the lock and lock. Okay, this needs to be dumped out. And then, okay, there we go. Perfect. I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. I gotta go watch the um, corn dogs. Yeah, this is trash. Oops. Okay. I probably need to check these. See how we're going here. Yep, they're popping up nicely. And the nice thing about making these at home, they're a lot cheaper than Casey's, number one. Um, number two, it's like bringing a taste of the park home with you. And you can make as many as you want, and you can serve it with, with whatever sauce you'd like. If you want barbecue, I'm going to put honey mustard on mine. Um, you could use them plain. You could do them with um, honey. You could do them with uh, barbecue or um, ketchup if you want. And then for the picture for these, Richard, I'm just going to um, put them in this. I thought they looked cute in this little ramekin. So I'll put them in there. Put this back. And now we're done with our frying. And that's a good thing because that was the messy part. I usually don't like to deep fry, like fry on the stove because it makes such a mess. 
But, I mean, Disney treats, what are you going to do? <laughs> you kind of have to. And I'll put all this away. And then by the time I get this done, we can, um, we can um, try the corn dog nugget. And then I'm going to check the, uh, what do you call it, um, churro wands again and see if we're in a little bit, a little bit better place to, um, I don't know why this keeps falling off this, I'm sorry, um, to coat them in the chocolate. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Well, I don't know. Maybe this is hand wash. It's melamine. I got it's hand wash. Okay. Done. So I'm going to put these. I'll get them ready for a picture. And then we can try them. I think it's the mat because it's not sticking anywhere else I'm walking. Put them in here. Get the pretty ones. And then I'm going to get another one and I'll put some um, honey mustard in there. Do you like honey mustard? Hmm? You want ketchup? Okay. They serve them with cheese sauce in um, Disneyland, I think. Excuse me. <laughs> it doesn't want to. There we go. You got to get a good chat. Here we go. There we go. And I'll get you some ketchup. We can try one without the ketchup and then with our sauces of choice. And then we can see how we like them. And I need ketchup anyway for the... Um, what do you call it? Can make a Mickey out of them. Put the condiments up there and then put. But we need these for the cheeseburger pod. There you go. How's it look? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try one, guys, without the um, sauce. You're going to try? Okay. Oh, hello. Welcome in. Mmm. So really good. Mm-hmm. Oh, you took a hot one? <laughs> okay. I'm going to dip one into the honey mustard now and see how we like it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This gets a 10 in my book. Mm-hmm. They taste like Casey's. Dare I say even better. What do you think, Richard? Mm-hmm. Um, I could sell those. <laughs> I mean, guys, look, they were so simple, and either you saw how quick they fried up. Um, I really like them. Sam, are you going to have some? Yeah? Okay, I'll put some in a little dish uh, plate for you. Okay. And I want to thank all of you for being here and um, supporting our uh, cause for hurricane relief and and showing uh, your support for LSU mom and her community where she's, you know, been born and raised her whole life. Um, so thank you. Do you want ketchup, honey mustard, or nothing? Okay. 
She, she wants the ketchup. Hi, Jane. Welcome in. Okay. Here you go, baby. Okay. I like those so much. I'm going to have one more and then I'll continue. <laughs> They're really good. I like it with the honey mustard personally. That's just me. Mm, so good. Now, I've got to move this, but I'm not sure where to yet. Very hot. I'm going to move it to the back because we're going to be using the um, burner again after I clean it up to uh, coat the churro wands into the chocolate. Just go there. And when it's, oh, I can try now. I can wipe the stove down. Try it with a damp cloth and see how that goes. Might be too hot still, but we'll see. Don't use all of that. I need some for my uh, cheeseburger pods. Okay. What do you think, Sam? Sam says, mm-hmm. So that, that means it's a thumbs up from Sam. And I did a general cleaning of that, but it has to cool off a little bit before I can clean it a little bit better. Woohoo, Woo Jerry. Welcome in. I'm so glad you're here. It's always good when you and Jane are here. Love you guys. These are really super good. <laughs> okay. I know it's been more than 30 minutes and I don't think these are gonna get any, um, any better. Richard's still having the, uh, he's partaking in the corn dog nuggets. I'm going to try to wipe that down again. I don't know if it's going to work. It's a little bit hot. Let's see what we can do here. Because I want to get this off the burner. There we go so that we're not burning stuff onto the bottom of the pot that we're gonna be using. Perfect. Okay, oh, that's hot. No joke, guys, that's hot. Okay. And then when that cools down, I will get my stainless steel cleaner and go over this, but for now, we're good. I think what I'm going to do now is get started on the wands and finishing those up. Um, but where did I put the chocolate chips? I had them out. Oh, yeah. I remembered. Okay. We've got a package of white chocolate chips. I use Ghirardelli, um, you could use Nestle or Valrona, whatever you like. We're going to melt it on medium low heat. And while that's uh, melting, we are going to do the um, crumb mixture that we're going to coat it in after we dip it in the chocolate. Okay. 
Okay, so we have a half a cup of graham cracker crumbs, and I put it in this pan because I thought it would be easier to coat the marshmallows and roll them around. So that was my thinking with that. And then I've got to refer to my recipe and see how much we need of the cinnamon and the sugar. We need three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, a third of a cup of graham cracker crumbs, which we already had, and one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. So here we go. This is a teaspoon, so we're gonna do one and a half. Always level off. And now I'm gonna guesstimate half there. And then we need three quarters of a cup of sugar, which we will grab. Oh, that's awesome, Brad. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's absolutely beautiful there. I hope you're having a wonderful time. I've been enjoying your pictures on Instagram. It looks like you're having a good time. Oh, hi, Paul. Happy birthday. Today is Paul's birthday, I believe. So happy, happy birthday. Okay, I'm going to wash these out. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to use this fork that's happened to be clean and sitting here and mix this all up. And then Richard, I'm going to need... I'm going to need to line, reline that with um, parchment paper, that uh, baking sheet, because what I'm going to do is take those off of there. I'll just lift the whole parchment sheet paper off. What I'll do is put those here to dip, and then um, I'll put, oh, I, I left it out. Uh, right there. I can do it. I, I've got it. I just want to mix this really well. And luckily the chocolate chips are on a medium low heat, the white chocolate chips, so they're not going anywhere. Okay. This is really pretty, guys. That smells yummy like a churro. So this is what we've got here. So that's what we're going to roll the wands in to finish. And now I'm going to move my wands over here. Avery is here. Oh, hola, Avery. Welcome in. Well, maybe I should just get another sheet since they're sticking to the parchment. I don't know why they're sticking to the parchment. But it might get really loud. I had another um, baking sheet out. What did I do with it? Oh, I covered it in foil. Huh. Thanks, Richie. And then when you're done with it, Richie, you can put it right here where I'm going to be assembling the wands. Nope, right here. We kind of got an assembly line going. Have any problems? No. <laughs> sure. And, and just to make sure, no, I shouldn't stick after I roll it in the crumbs, so we should be all right. So this is starting to look really good, melty. We're almost there. Mm. 
my dish towel fell on the floor. <laughs> there we go. These look really thick. I might add just a touch if I have of corn syrup just to thin this out a touch. Richie, can I put you to work for a minute? Can you just stir that constantly while I go get the little touch of corn syrup? If I can find it. Here it is. Luckily, it's right in the front. But I'm going to put just a drop of corn syrup in, guys. This is light, uh, Cairo light corn syrup, because it's um, really thick to me. It's funny, because the caramel I thought would be thick. I can get in. Thanks. Thank you, Richard. Hearts for Richard, guys. He's doing a really great job. I usually don't use corn syrup in my cooking, but this is really like seizing. I don't know why. Okay. That needs to go over here because it's leaking. Okay. Let's see. What's the problem here? It turned into like clay. And it's not supposed to do that. So now I'm going to go to a plan B and see what's going on. Melt white chocolate, medium saucepan over low heat and keep warm. Well, I did that. Let's see. Maybe it got cold. No, it just basically turned into clay. I'm not sure what happened, but what I'm going to do, oops, yeah, I don't know what in the world happened. But we'll make do. I'm going to melt them in a bowl in the microwave instead. And that should solve the problem because I can control the heat better maybe. We'll see. I've never had chocolate seeds up on me and there's no liquid in there. Except I did add a little bit of the corn syrup to try to loosen it up. That didn't work. It turned it into clay. Okay, 30 seconds. But that's okay because when things go wrong in the kitchen, you just, oh, is that what you have with me? You're not even paying attention to the camera angles. That's. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we can use that as like chocolate, white chocolate modeling clay or something if you have little ones. But we're going to slowly melt this in the microwave because, you know, the best laid plans sometimes go awry. Although I've been melting chocolate a long, long time and I've never seen that happen before. There's always a first time though, right? Look at the TV. <laughs> That's hilarious. Mom. 
it looks like it's gonna rain. I didn't know it was supposed to rain today. Okay, no worries. Okay, so every 30 seconds we're gonna try this and make sure we don't over, you know, melt it. This is looking much better. Now what happened? It seems to me, usually when chocolate seizes like that, it means it got liquid in there somehow and I have no idea how that happened. But this is looking much better. Okay, yeah, I'm much happier with the melted uh, microwave chocolate. We're gonna go with this. Avery said, what do you call a childish churro? Ooh, I don't know, Avery, what do we call it? A immature. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. Okay, so now we're gonna coat this in the chocolate. Getting all the excess off. And if my microwave could have accommodated it, I probably would have used a square uh, dish so I could have coated them a little bit easier, but that's okay. We're doing good. Doing good. And you don't want a thick layer, just a nice thin layer. And then we're going to go into the cinnamon sugar. And then look, guys. Don't they look great? It just, you know, trial and error. Jason Dobbs said, get off the couch, man. <laughs> That'll be the day, Jason. <laughs> Sam loves her couch. She walks a lot at the park, so she earns it. Just give it a spin. I'll give it a coat. They look pretty. Oops, a whole bunch of chocolate just fell in there. That's okay. Now these are not coated in caramel. So some of the sticks, two of the sticks were coated in caramel. So I want to get that off my hands so I can work a little bit more. Really. All righty. Yeah, Danny B said those are definitely going to be a 10, Donna. You think? They look really good. They're a little bit messy to make, but you know, you don't have all the fancy equipment like Disney has, like dippers where you can just dip the chocolate in, the sticks into the chocolate and all that. But I think we're doing good. They look nice. Hi, CH. Welcome in. Good to see you, my friend. Okay. I'm going to spin, 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 spin. And get the extra chocolate off this thing so it doesn't go into the... All right. There we go. They look like the picture. I will say that. And you just got to be patient and, you know, don't put too much chocolate on because it'll weigh your marshmallows down and it will drip everywhere. So just kind of turn it, get the excess off. Give it a little gentle tap. Gentle, gentle, gentle. There we go. That looks 
looks good. We got the crumbs on there. Oh, I don't know about that. Looking good. Yeah, definitely I would recommend doing your chocolate in the microwave. Um, it's doing a much better job for me than the way they told me to do it. And I usually do my chocolate in the, um, melt it in the microwave. I should have went with my, what I knew. Um, but like I said, I always try the way a recipe is written first. Unless I see something that's blatantly something I wouldn't do. So I'm like, oh, wait a minute. But something made that chocolate seize up. So I'm glad I had an extra bag of chocolate chips. Okay. That looks good. These look really nice. Okay. And I wonder how different this would have been to not just the chocolate, but if I had been able, if I used, uh, you know, the caramels, like the candy that you unwrap. I wonder if that would have made a difference, but we'll see how they taste. That's what it really where it really counts, but I will say they look just like the picture. So that's a plus. And you wanna make sure you get them all coated um, so that you know the cinnamon and sugar mixture will stick to it. Has anyone in the chat been to Disneyland? And if so, have you tried the churro toffee? I'm curious. It's it's one of my favorite things. So good. Okay. That's what I try. I tried corn syrup, thinking that might help, but it didn't work. Usually that does. Um, what I'm thinking is some kind of moisture must have gotten into the chocolate because that's usually what makes it seize like that is um, seize up like that because it basically turned into a clay. And I've never seen that happen before. And I've been tempering chocolate, gosh, since I was, well, more than 20 years, I'll say that. Probably more than almost 30. Stop it. Don't pick on me, Richie. He's calling me old, you guys. The funny thing is he's older than me, so no matter what he says, he's older. So he's just dating himself. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. These look really good, though. Really? Now, see, the one I had definitely tasted of a uh, churro it had the cinnamon and sugar and uh was so good it's funny though everyone has like a, a slightly different palate so what tastes good to someone doesn't always taste good to someone else like some people um you can't have cilantro it tastes like soap to them and like well you guys see steve He's very sensitive. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what he says. I don't know. I, I still want proof. <laughs> okay. We're on the last one, guys. Thanks for hanging in there. It's a process, but, you know, it's a yummy process. I always wondered... 
how much fun it must be to work in like the bakery or the candy making or apple making section of Disney. I, I would find that very therapeutic and calming. <laughs> I could do that all day. And Richard, I'm going to have you, I don't know why it had me make so many crumbs because it had me make eight churro wands and there's a lot left over, but maybe I can save it and use it. If I make these again, I can use it as the topping for stuff. Okay. Cause look guys, I did the directions and look how much I've got left. <laughs> So I'm going to put it in a lock and lock and maybe use it to top ice cream or uh, put in cookies or make these again. And I'll put that in a lock and lock. Michelle, the quilter said she always wanted to work in the Werther store. Oh, man, that would be just the smell going in there would make me happy every day. For now, Richard, let's see. Can you reach that for me? I'm too short. I'm going to clean this up a little bit so we don't have a sticky mess on our hands. We have to let those set. And I'll put the crumbs away. That square one on the far left. Okay. All right, and again, I'll show you guys what happened here. Uh, oh, we're not on me. Where are they? Oh, you're here. This is what we're looking at. We got clay. I don't know what happened, but we've got um, Play-Doh. Tastes good, but it's not right. As opposed to this, which is what we wanted. So I'm not sure what happened. Hmm. More for you, Richie. And this is our finished product, guys. Don't they look pretty? We're going to let them set. So I'm going to put them over on the um, dining room table there and let them set up before we try them. Oops. I got caught on the handle. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna, do you want any of this melted chocolate? Okay, then I'll get rid of it. And put this in the dishwasher. Oh. Here, put it. There we go. Got this. It's going to do a little cleanup. And then we're going to make our um, cheeseburger pots. And those are going to be fun because we're going to use a method you may not have used before to cook them. And you guys are going to be so happy because I already started the dough before the show because it takes two hours to rise. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. You can make sure of Sundays now. And sorry for all the noise, guys. Okay. Okay. Cool. Our mics aren't staying on today. I don't know what's wrong. It must be us. Okay. So now, um, these are going to be the most kind of labor intensive thing that we're doing today. 
Um, it is the cheeseburger pods. Oops, I'm gonna get my board out because I'm gonna need it. Um, and these tongs can go in the dishwasher. Okay, sorry guys. Um, but we are making the cheeseburger pods like they serve at Satuli uh, Canteen, the quick service at Animal Kingdom in Pandora, uh, Avatar Land or whatever you want to call it. Um, anyhow, um, I love them. Richard hasn't been so keen on them in the past. I'm trying to convert him into liking them. Um, this recipe was given to me by our viewer, Mary Beth T, and she so graciously mailed me. Uh, and typed out and mailed me the actual recipe she had for these. Um, so we're going to see how they turn out. I also put a link in the um, Facebook group and in the description in case you just want a hyperlink to a similar recipe. So, all right. Now, uh, these are going to be different because we're steaming them. But instead of using a traditional bamboo steamer, we are going to be using our... Um, Instant Pot. So I think my recipe is under here. It was under there. Okay. I've lost my recipe, but that's okay because I will find it. It's around this kitchen somewhere. It's only so big. Mm -hmm, got it. Okay. So I'm going to get my dough out first of all. See, I'm using the bowl that you and Neil got me for Christmas. I don't know which one of you got that. I got two of them, one from Melissa and Neil and one from Richie. So this is from all of them because I don't know whose is whose. So thank you, guys. But I already made the dough, which is here. And um, I've got a damp towel over the top, and I had it in the oven where it's warm. Um, not on, of course, just so it stayed dry and, and out of the cold room with the air conditioning. Now, um, this yields 12 to 24 uh, bao buns. Um, and for the dough, we used a third of a cup of warm water, two teaspoons of instant yeast. I used active dry because I couldn't find instant in my store. Uh, a tablespoon of canola oil, one and a quarter cups of bread flour, plus more if needed. Um, I had to use, we did not have bread flour at my store again. Um, <laughs> so I have to use AP, which is all-purpose flour. Um, you should be able to use those interchangeably, so hopefully everything comes out right. Uh, we'll see. Um, a teaspoon of kosher salt and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. So then what I did was I proofed the yeast, and what you do with that is you get your warm water, the sugar, and the um, yeast, and you mix it. I put it in a measuring cup, um, and then you let it, I let it sit about 10 minutes, um, till it's called blooming. Um, you need the sugar because that is what feeds and activates the yeast. If you just put the water and yeast together, not much is going to happen. Um, but that's why you need the sugar in there. And then um, after it blooms, you add the oil to it. So we did that. And then you mix it in with the flour and the salt and the baking soda, which we sipped it. So that's the dough. Now, uh, we did that, we did that, we did that, and we're at this part now. We're at the part where we're going to portion the balls, the dough, into balls that are two inches in diameter and let them rest for five minutes. Then we're going to flatten them into a three-inch diameter disc, and then we're going to make the filling. So what we're going to do now is portion our bow button. I'm going to put this down here because it's driving me nuts. Avery asked, yes. what did Miss say Mrs. Cheeseburger named her daughter? Oh, I feel like I should know this one, Avery. I don't know. What did they name it? Oh, you got me, Avery. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to, um, does, it, does it want me to light? Yeah. No, we did that. Portion the dough into balls. Well, it doesn't say to do flour, so I'm, I'm not going to. Although this dough is just a touch sticky, so I'm just going to, you know. And for Piccolo says, we just made our pods. They're steaming now. I have a lot of meat mixture left over. I'm going to freeze it and make it again another day. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Jen. Okay. Now, hopefully, the 
that damp towel is helping. Okay, so I'm gonna portion these into two ounce ball, uh, two inch round balls. And we're gonna let them rise for five minutes. And what we can do is while they're rising, we'll make the filling. And now if you don't like cheeseburger filling, like I know Richard doesn't, but I do. So that's what we're having, sorry. <laughs> um, then you can use chicken, you can use buffalo chicken, you can use teriyaki chicken, you can use uh, like crab rangoon, you can put whatever you want in these, um, honestly, and make them your own. This is just a traditional little bow bun. Try to get them round. That's one thing I've always been really bad at is getting things perfectly round. Um, I don't know why. Does that look bigger than two inches to you? Looks about right. Okay. I don't want to make them too big. I'm going to let it rise for five minutes after we um, get them all portioned out. And this is where I think um, having a weight would help. If PTV is still watching, I bet you would recommend that, um, like portioning them out to like an ounce or something so that they're all equivalent. That might help, huh? Oh, well, Emily, that's a hard one to answer because I started helping um, in the kitchen when I was like five years old, maybe. And my earliest memory um, is helping my grandma uh, bake cookies at Christmas time. And I was in charge of, of uh, cracking the walnuts and getting because they didn't come shelled at that time. You had to buy them in the shell and you had to crack them and get the meat of the um, nut out of the shell. And I remember that being my job and I, I felt so important, but you know, it was probably because they didn't want to do it, <laughs> but I thought it was great. I always kept an eye on what my mom, aunts and um, grandma were doing in the kitchen. They, they were so nice to make me a part of it. Um, so my first cooking by myself, I think I was like, I want to say like seven or eight. I remember making like a shepherd's pie or something for my family um, for dinner one night. That's my earliest memory. I don't know if my mom's watching, but mom, if you're watching, type in the chat if you remember the first time I cooked anything. I remember cooking mac and cheese, and that was an epic fail. I think I told you guys that story. I was about 10 when that happened, and I knew something was wrong, but my mom kept telling me to put more flour in. She thought it was flour, but our containers weren't labeled back then. And um, I was adding powdered sugar instead of flour to the <laughs> macaroni and cheese. And I kept telling her, I'm like, this doesn't look right. It's not thickening up. She's like, add more flour, add more flour. I'm like, how much flour can I add? Well, we added a lot of powdered sugar, and boy, did that taste horrible. <laughs> and that's when I started labeling things in the kitchen, because I'm like, I need to know what's what in here, because... You know, that was not cool. Cricket Fox says good morning. Good morning, Cricket. I hope you're doing well. So, okay, we kind of got a mishmash here. It said between 12 and 24. I got 13. <laughs> so go figure. But while we make the filling, I'm going to set these aside, and then um, we'll make the filling here. No, but you could use gluten-free uh, flour. I don't know how they'd work, how well it would work in bao buns, um, but you can definitely try. Okay, so I have my bowl 
here. Okay. And this one's done. And now we're just going to mix up the filling, which is uh, ground beef. And thank you. And do -do -do, uh, yellow onion, uh, cubed cheddar cheese. I'm using relish instead of pickle. Um, just a preference for me. Uh, kosher salt and pepper. Uh, not kosher pepper, but kosher salt and freshly ground pepper to taste. Ketchup and mustard and more cheese. I'm just going to use shredded cheese um, in mine uh, to mix it up. So now it says combine the beef, onion, pickles. Just pretty much put everything in the bowl. That's what we'll do. And then I'm going to use my gloves to mix it up. And then, Richard, what you could do for me that would be a huge help is um, possibly lining this with foil because when I warm the buns, I'm going to put them on a foil-lined um, baking sheet so that I can um, steam them in batches because I don't think they'll all fit at one time. I think I can fit half of them at a time in my Instant Pot steamer. Thank you, Richard. Richard's such a big help. I don't know what I would do without Richard and Sam. Okay. So the ketchup and mustard are out. That's correct, right? So I just need the relish, the cheese. And now your cheese cubes, what we're going to do, it's almost going to be like a stuffed meatball kind of. We're going to um, like make a, the ball of a meatball kind of around the cheese and encase the cheese in the meatball and then put it in to the bao bun. So let's see. I think I've got everything. No, I don't. I don't have the beef. How can you make cheeseburger pods without the beef? That reminds me of that commercial. Remember, guys, from the 80s? Where is beef? Where is beef? Right here. And I'm going to make my traditional 93% meat, ground beef, there's vegetables. You can use fancy stuff. You can use five whatever you like. Really? Sorry, guys, I just kicked you. I don't know why this isn't staying. We're going to have to figure that out next time. I'm putting it on tight. My mic just keeps flying off. Okay. Oh, the onion. Did I get the onion? I don't think I did. Okay, so we've got the onion that I already diced. Easy peasy. Okay, and then in a bowl, combine the pickle, ketchup, mustard, and shredded cheese. Then take a cube of cheese. Okay, so I'm going to actually, hmm, I'm going to form the meatball things and put them on that tray. Then I'm going to make the buns, and I'll probably put them on two paper plates, Richard. That will make it easier. Okay, um, I wish. 
We don't need much. And then we need about a quarter of a cup, it says, of yellow mustard. Oh, it's probably easier if I bang it. I wasn't sure if there was if it was going to squeeze out or not, but we'll see. There we go, mustard. Then we've got our ketchup. It's almost kind of like a meat loaf, isn't it? Tommy, welcome in. So glad you're here. And who that Dave is here. Hi, Dave, welcome in. And again, guys, don't forget, we are raising money um, for um, Hurricane Ida. Uh, disaster relief, um, especially in the um, Bayou Buff area. Um, so that's why we have a pin link to the top to a Venmo where you can uh, donate directly to the volunteer fire department. That's really helpful there. Uh, and that will distribute the money to the people that need it the most uh, with goods and all kinds of other things that they're helping with. So, and those of you who are in so inclined, you can also PayPal Emily. Um, her link is in the video description. And she's going to put baskets together with the money that she receives of supplies that people need. So that'll be really helpful. That's what I'm going to do. Yep. See, Jen, that's why we're friends. We think alike. Great minds, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I'm going to do. You want to get it really well mixed, and then we're going to, um, let's see if I can do it. I think I can do it. I did it. See? You didn't think I could do it, but I did it. Okay. Okay, this looks really good. But I want to make sure everything's evenly distributed, and there's not like, you know, you bite in and you get one big gulp of mustard or relish or any of that. So, um, I did. I made the um, churro uh, marshmallow one. That's what I made from that cookbook. Um, this recipe was given to me from a viewer, Mary Beth T. She actually typed it out and sent it to me. Um, and the corn dog nuggets, um, that's just pretty simple. And I actually found a recipe for you guys online, but it was pretty much the way I was going to make it anyway. <laughs> That's the tricky part. And I'm not sure how successful I will be, but we're going to try. Okay. So I just cubed the cheese and then... This is to kind of, well, see, I can't really do it with a scoop. I was going to do it with a scoop, but how'd you get the, the, the cheese inside, Jen? The cube of cheese. Or did you not put a cube of cheese in there? We have, thir I said 13, right? right? Left. Yeah, I normally would have formed these with a scooper, but I don't think you really can because this says to put the chunk of cheese in the middle, and I don't know how you do that with a scooper. Hmm. Jen, do tell me how you did this. <laughs> uh, 
hand over and want to know where you got your cute, cute chef coat. Oh, I actually had it um, made for me. You send in your logo and they make a digital design and they embroider the chef's coat for you. Um, so it's chefswear.com and you can get any design you want on there, which is kind of cool. You can get your name or what restaurant you work at, if you work at a restaurant. Or... That looks big. I'm trying to whittle that down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to have leftover meat too. Hmm. I don't want to make these too big though because I don't want them not to fit in the disc and then they'll, they'll explode. So we've got eight, two, four, six, eight. I need five more. Oh, perfect. I hope they're not too big. You think they're the right size, Mary Beth? I think they're going to fit. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, ten, three more. I'm just going to have a little bit of meat left over, not a whole bunch. Okay. And one more. And then we need to dispose of this cheese that's left over because I had raw meat on it. The cheese. Yeah. Don't look at me like what cheese. Don't eat it. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Okay. And now I'm going to need another. Oh, you know what you could do? Can you dump that cheese out for me? Because I'm going to use it to put the meat, leftover meat in. And then I'll have to reach for a mock and mock and knock our whole setup down. <laughs> Who's on first, Richie? <laughs> There we go. I'm going to take my gloves off, wash my hands, and then we're going to get to the discs of uh, dough. That's what I, exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to freeze it for next time. And I'm going to dry my hands if I can find my towel, which is under here. Mary Beth said, we sometimes make less in number, but more dough to cover the meat. Oh, that makes sense. That sounds like a plan. Okay. So now these are done. How to eat our bower buns now. Jersey Mike better come quickly as they are going fast. <laughs> You heard him, Mike. You gotta head on over. All right. Now we have our buns. We have our meat. And I'm gonna put the relish away. Now 
There we go. All right. Now, do -do 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 -do. so guys, I got this steamer basket for my instant pot, and it should fit about I'm gonna say six or seven of them at a time. And then I also got these um, baking paper liners so that the uh, dumplings or bao buns don't stick. But because these are smaller than my basket, I'm going to put two in at a time. But they have holes in them so the steam can, you know, get in there. Jennifer said, we needed to steam them closer to 15 minutes so that the filling was completely cooked. Okay, did you do it in the Instant Pot, Jen, or a bamboo steamer? Mary Beth said, yes, steam them for 20 minutes. Okay, so, okay, 20 minutes, got it. Basic Jalen says hello. Jalen! Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. We miss you so much. I haven't been in the parks to see you often, but I hope you're doing well. And congratulations on graduating from college. That's such a big deal. I'm so proud of you. Okay. So what I'm going to do... Huh. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Okay. Said, I used a large shallow saucepan with a lid and a steamer basket. Okay, I'm wondering if it might not take as long in the instant pot. I'm going to try 10 minutes, maybe 15. I think I'll do 15. What do you guys think? I'd like to know. And then I'm going to use this and go like this. And then I'm going to gather it up and Jalen said, I live in Orlando now, finally. Hope oh, yay. Oh, that would be wonderful, Jalen. We sure do miss you a lot. I know Sam's run into you a couple of times, but I miss you. And this first one is probably like the first pancake. It doesn't look pretty, but I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Do we have, you know what's going to help is, dry that off. Maybe this will help me a little bit. Okay, so I'm doing them in the instant pot and it's going to put it under pressure. I'm going to say 10 minutes and check them. We can always put them in longer. said miss you guys as well yes oh. i saw sam at boo bash with nick so awesome i'm so glad they got to see you well, i hope you're liking um living in orlando it must be nice being closer to work <laughs> oh this one looks a little bit better sort of kind of looks like a little beggar's purse <laughs> You guys have seen those, right? Okay. Yeah, if you guys are ever at Magic Kingdom and you're at, um, I believe you work at Splash, right, Jalen? Look for Jalen at Splash Mountain. If you see him, say hello, because he's super cool. Really, really nice young man. And a really good dancer, too.
Um, Instant Pot. I'm going to put them on a rack. There we go. Steam. Do you know what happened? I wonder what happened. Our internet's acting wonky, guys, so we apologize. But you didn't miss much. I'm still rolling out dumplings. Um, thanks for sticking with me, everyone who's still here. I appreciate it. I love bow buns. I don't know about you guys. Animal Kingdom has some really good ones, too. These cheeseburger pods. They have the um, barbecue uh, pork ones. I think at Yak and Yeti. Really yummy. And like I said, you can put all veg in here. You can use impossible meat, turkey, chicken, whatever you fancies you. Um, did I see that with you? Yeah, I thought, no. Did I see it with you? Oh, I think I saw it with Richard. That was back in what, 2018, 2019? They're looking a little better. I'm getting a little bit better with the uh, time. Let's see. How's our chat doing? Oh, thank goodness. Yay. And I'm echoing. I, I don't know why I'm echoing, and I apologize, guys. This has been one of those trying days. <laughs> Great. Your worst nightmare. <laughs> I'm not shutting up. <laughs> We're just like, oh, no. But that's another good tip, guys, is, it, like, I didn't want to have to put gloves on again and touch the meat because I didn't want to, you know, even though the meat's going in the, uh, you know, rolled out dough, I didn't want to put my hands on there and then on the dough. So I'm using tongs to put the um, meatballs into the little um, rolled out uh, discs of dough. And I'm sorry if I'm like pausing. It's because I'm hearing my own voice and it really freaks me out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Hey, I want to know if you checked out the Jasmine, Jasmine Princess Half Demon. Yeah. No, I have not. I have not, JL. Would you recommend that one? Okay. I think I might get a dumpling maker for next time. Okay. And now in, um, on our next show, guys, we're going to have a fun one. Um, I, I think I've told you how much I love the convenience and versatility of uh, this, well, prepared product, but we're going to do lots of things with it. Um, we're going to have a show all about crescent roll dough and all the different things you can make with it. 
it's going to be fun and it's we're going to cover the gamut we're going to make breakfast we're going to make appetizers we're going to make desserts we're going to make entrees for dinner it's going to be awesome i love crescent roll though Started to twist, so I'm twisting at the top. They're not much for pretty, but <laughs> hopefully they taste good. And would you, if you wouldn't mind doing me a huge favor and turning the AC down one notch, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, a degree. We're in the home stretch, guys. Three more. So here's what we've got right now. I've got to get three more made. And then hopefully the first batch will be done. I think I get like four in there. And I've noticed the key is rolling it out probably twice the diameter, at least, of your meatballs so that you can crimp and gather. That's where I was having the problem at first. I wasn't rolling it out enough because, um, yeah, this is working much better. There we go. Two more guys. And thank you for sticking with me. I know we've had a little bit of some troubles today with our audio and internet and all that jazz. I appreciate you sticking around and everyone who's been able um, to help our cause today. Thank you so much. And to those of you who, who can't, um, you know, afford financially, I totally understand that. Times are tough. Uh, prayers are always greatly and tremendously appreciated. So we can always do something. Gather, 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 crimp. It's kind of fun, I've got to say, making these. I I really think the more you do it, uh, then you become a little bit more fearless with it. The first couple, I was really nervous making them. because I've never done this before. Um, but now it's like, oh, okay, got it. Crimp, 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 twist, pat down, and... You're good to go. But the trick really, I would say, is rolling your dough out to a good diameter so you can gather um, the dough up and crimp it. Otherwise, you can't get a good crimp on it. Okay. Last one. Do I really sound like that? How do people live with me? Okay. Thanks, Richard. That Florida feeling. Hi, that Florida feeling. Welcome in. Okay, that's my last one.
Okay, I'm gonna do just a touch of cleanup, guys. Oh my God. This chocolate is like solidified. It's, I don't know what happened to that chocolate that. We will uh, try the churro ones and, oh, good, we're back. Anyhow, um, we can try the churro ones. And what I think I'm going to do with them, did you get a nice picture of them, Richard? Because I can put them in a, at like a cup or something. So I was thinking they look maybe cute in something like this standing up. We can try it. Oh my goodness gracious. Are you able to give them a tour? The rain? It's coming down. Here we go. Don't they look cute in the little cup? Wow. I didn't know it was going to rain like that today. Did you? As I said, 40%. Well, I know, but that usually doesn't mean it's going to rain here. Uh, and if you could grab one more picture of these, that'd be awesome in the cup. And then that can be done. Maybe put, should we put them up there? Because the board's dirty. to be in the picture. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we're going in for um, churro ones. They look really yummy. Boy, their gutters are... <laughs> Our neighbor's gutters are like overflowing. It's crazy. Okay. Ready? Want to fight? <laughs> They're not white paper. They're tasty, I hope. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. A lot of ways with blood sugar. 
Really good. The texture. Mm-hmm. I'm impressed. Better, better than I thought it would be. And that caramel really did hold up. I can taste it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though it was thin, it did its job. Mike? Very good. Mm. Wow. I'm really glad I'm not out there. <laughs> Okay, so now the cleanup begins. Justin, welcome in. Oh my, oh my goodness, it's getting worse, Richard. You should show them the rain. Yes, Joe Kim's not doing anything right now. <laughs> it's really coming down, guys. No joke. And our neighbors are in the pool. You can see the fireworks right over there between that house and that tree. And people are in their pools. Kingdom. Are they crazy? It's really coming down. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. That was a nice bumpy ride. Was it bumpy? All right. So I'm just going to do a little cleanup, guys. So bear with me. Enjoy the background music and the rain. And um, while I do this, um, after I'm done... Uh, if the buns aren't done, I'm going to show you some things that I bought, and we will talk a little bit more about our um, disaster relief. <laughs> this mat feels so sticky. Oy. I can't even. Carol in Wonderland said, I'm late to the party, but I'll definitely rewatch. Oh, hi, Carol. No worries. Welcome in. Richie just took everyone on a field trip. <laughs> I think everything that is going to fit in the dishwasher is in the dishwasher. I'll have to run it off after. Kathleen Stalford said, you have a beautiful yard, Donna. Hi, Kathleen. Thank you. It's usually not that soap, but yeah, we love it. Thank you so much. All right. I think I helped a little bit, didn't I? With the cleanup. So it's not so rough on you. One minute, guys. One minute until we check the pods. Now, what I'm going to do to check them is pretty simple. I'm just going to use my thermometer, stick them in the middle, because if the meat's cooked, then that's all we really need to worry about. And, of course, you don't want your dough to be doughy, but, I mean, for safety reasons, the meat is the main uh, factor.
Whoa, hello. It smells good. I can smell them. waiting for the pin to drop. That's like waiting for the other shoe to drop. Okay. They look pretty. Let's see what we're at here. I'm going to close this. Then we're going to activate. Barbecue sauce. Yep, they are done. So I did them for about 12 minutes in the um, instant pot. So what I'm going to do is try gently to lift them out of here. <laughs> That's easier said than done. Hey, I did it, Richie. So I'll put them here so you guys can see them. And then I'll let them cool just a touch. And then we'll try them. And then you don't need to watch me remake the whole thing. That, I just have two more batches of them to do. But while we're letting them cool, um, I'll show you the neat stuff that Sam picked up yesterday for me. Um, at the Ratatouille uh, a AP event. She got her preview uh, yesterday. We got ours for Thursday, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be making mine only because um, I have a um, an event for Give Kids the World on Thursday and Friday. So I'm probably going to be there, but we'll see. But Richie's going to go on his, so that's good. But she got me... Uh, Yes. Um, LSD mom says, John, I have to head out for now. I'll let you know the total donation that came in and let you know that the supplies I purchased to help families in need. Thanks for giving again, everyone to all who donated. Oh, Emily, you are just awesome. And you do so much for us. It, this is the least we can do is help you and your community. Um, and I know, you know, you have a lot of family and friends there who were affected by the storms. Um, and this is just our small way of saying we love you and, and give, you know, paying it back and paying it forward for all the good things you've done for us for so many years. Um, and like I said, you're one of my best friends and I love you like family and I, there's nothing else I would rather do than help you. So I love you so much and just know that you're in our thoughts and prayers. And, um, yeah, when you know, when you know the totals, just let me know and I'll post it in the Facebook group and on the community page and let everybody know. But we love you, Emily. Thank you so much. Did you fix it? Do we die? <laughs> We're having technical difficulties again. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. All right. So Sam picked me up. This is from the scavenger hunt. And she knows how much I love Belle and Beauty and uh, the Beast. So this is the little prize for it. It's a little ramekin. And, and she knew that I would definitely, wow, a whole bunch of our tree just fell down, like a whole branch. Oh, anyway, sideline. Um, <laughs> never saw that happen before. Um, but this is, it's melamine. So it's not glass or anything, but it's really uh, sturdy. And I, she knew I would use this definitely. Um, there goes more. Wow. What is going on with that tree, Richard? <laughs> uh, um, anyhow. Um, but she knew I would use this on my cooking show and for a lot of things I can, you know, measure things in here, use it for presentation and bells on it. And I think it's just adorable. So she got me that. And then she got me this, um, little ride vehicle, but it's not one of the ones that you pull back and it, it zooms. Um, where's the button? I don't know if you can show it, Richard, but I'll put it on the counter here and maybe you can do the prep cam would show it.
So it plays the music from the ride and it has the little ride vehicle and it goes and it it sends it has a sensor in it so that if it bumps into anything it turns around. It's almost like a little boomer, which is kind of cool. And so she got that. But the PS de resistance as <laughs> well speaking of that check this out so she got me the hat but watch this she pressed the cheese oh is it not on yeah, oh it is oh sorry Isn't that cute? <laughs> she knew I had to have it. So yeah, we got the chef's hat. <laughs> and actually, considering what a pair of ears is worth, uh, is going for now, that was not a bad deal. Um, the chef's hat was $34.99 before uh, an AP discount. And um, ears now are going for like $30. $9.99, which is, I think is outrageous. And it doesn't do all that cool stuff that that hat does. So, yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was our haul from yesterday. <laughs> I thought you guys would like it. CH said you should make the rat card a butter dish, put it on your dining room table for fancy dinners and let it serve the butter <laughs> for all your guests. Oh, CH, you're hilarious. I love you. You're awesome. Okay, Richie, we're going to try a ball bun. And then we will wrap it up since we've been live for almost three hours. Oops. Okay. So here's what a bow bun looks like. Yeah, fork and a knife. So we can eat it gracefully and not be disgusting. <laughs> of course, I saw us eat beignets. How bad could it be? Still have powder on my shit. I, I know. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it like that, and then. Look at the cheese coming out. Mm -hmm. oh. The cheese is oozing in the middle, which is a good sign. I'm just cut them in quarters. You ready? It's pro oh, it's probably warm. Probably. Mmm. I like that better than the one at Animal Kingdom. Mmm. Really good. Yummy. I think that's a hit. Sam's gonna devour those. Not if I do. I'm gonna make the rest of them. But um, yeah. So I would say this show was a big success. Um, hearts again in the chat for Emily because we just love her. I know she left, but she'll probably watch the replay. So Emily, we love you. Hearts for Emily. Um, hearts for Louisiana and the Northeast and everyone who was affected by the storms. Um, two weeks from today, 4 o'clock, we will be making all things crescent roll dough. Uh, from appetizers and snacks to desserts and entrees, it's going to be amazing. A bouquet. It's a bouquet of marshmallows. <laughs> Anyhow, I want to thank you all for uh, sticking with us through all the technical things we went through today, losing the internet, rainstorms, all that crazy stuff, uh, the audio. We appreciate you. Um, you know, you stick through it with us. We're by no means professionals at this, and we just do the best we can. And uh, we appreciate all of you coming in and hanging with us on Sunday. So we love you, and on behalf of Richard and Sam, who bolted on us, um, I am going to wish you a very happy two weeks. Happy Labor Day weekend to everyone. Stay safe, be kind, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. So bye, guys. See bye. you in the chat.